Hey, welcome to Graphic Policy Television, GPTV. I'm bright in my hands. Is I got a cheat skill in another world and became unrivaled in the real world. To volume one, uh, this was this was a really it was a fun start. I do have some issues with it, but generally it's been a fun start. Uh, art is by Kazumi Minetogawa. Original story is by Miku. Character design is Rain Kuwashima. Translation Noburu Akimoto. Lettering Arbash Mugo. Um, all right, so the story is about this guy who uh, named Yuya, who was kind of you know pudgy kid and uh, got picked on uh, in school. Uh, he winds up inheriting a house from his grandfather, and his parents are like, "Yeah, let's just dump him there," because even his parents seem to not like him. Uh, his, his younger siblings don't definitely don't like him, so he's kind of on his own, trying to live and survive in this house. Uh, what he finds is a mysterious door, which sends him to a different world. And he quickly starts changing from the pudge ball that he was to kind of a ripped, good-looking hero, uh, learning all sorts of skills in this fantasy world as he defeats monsters and learns spells and magic and swordplay and spear use and all sorts of crazy stuff. And when he heads back into the real world, well, he still is that person, uh, you know, the good-looking guy with all these skills that he can use in the real world. Um, so this this is an interesting first volume. I like the concept. I like bits of it. To me, the issue is um, that a lot of it feels very choppy. There, the each section flows really nicely, but the action the sections don't flow together. Um, there's a thing with like a princess in the fantasy world where he you know saves her and it just kind of ends and doesn't go anywhere. Uh, and then there's a thing with him modeling, which kind of ends and just doesn't go anywhere. But you know those hopefully will get picked up in the next volume. Uh, there's him, you know, being picked out in schools, which just kind of just ends and doesn't go anywhere. Uh, his, of course, there's the whole family thing, which was the setup that just kind of ends and doesn't go anywhere. Uh, you know, it's it's a lot. It doesn't feel like a flowing narrative as opposed to a series of vignettes uh, that kind of are mushed together, a bunch of chapters mushed together for one volume. Um, and each chapter feels kind of like a setup in a way for more to come, which is fine, because I think once we get to the second volume, third, fourth, whatever, it's just, it's, it's going to flow much better. It's just the setup is, I think, a little rough and, and maybe could have spent more time in the fantasy world and then just hadn't spent more time in the real world and kind of played off that a little bit more and gave us a smoother narrative. It's, it just doesn't feel like it kind of commits to anything enough and really pays off in that. It just does the, the wind up and then never quite delivers. Uh, still, I, I really do like the setup. Like, I think there's so much potential in this. We get so many stories of these people going into, like, fantasy worlds and being able to use their powers in, in the fantasy world. We don't ever see what happens when they come back to the real world. So I actually think there's some really cool potential here uh, for where this series takes it. Like, how would you use your, like, fighting skills in the real world? Like, what would happen? Um, there's also the fact that, like, yeah, he's gaining this experience and all that, but it, he's not really learning anything, if that makes sense. Like, he really is kind of cheating with some of the weapons he has and his home and all these other things. So it's it's not a thing that, like, he's training in kind of that traditional sense. It's just the, like, I have this super uber duper powerful weapon and, um, you know, it's kind of doing all the work and I'm kind of getting the gain off of it. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, like, there's cool stuff in it. It just, it, to me, it just hasn't come together quite yet. So uh, here's hoping uh, for the second volume. I definitely want to read more. I just, this one, it's kind of like, it teases a lot, and I don't think it ever quite pays off in the way it probably hopes to. Um, but it sets things up quite well. Uh, this is out now. You can go get it. We got a link beneath this video where you can go find your local comic shop. Uh, put in your zip code and tell the shops near you. No shop, no problem. We have, have some links underneath where you can purchase your own. Uh, there'll be affiliate links so you can get a small percentage. By doing that, you'll support our site. So thank you. And speaking of support, I want to thank Yen Press for winning us up with this review copy. And of course, thank you all for watching. If you are into manga, if you're into comics, graphic novels, check us out every single day at graphicpolicy.com. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Tumblr, all at Graphic Policy, keeping it nice and consistent. So until next time, keep reading that manga and keep it geeky.
Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.